generated in our mind are indeed very powerful thoughts mold a person and it influences one's actions hence thoughts define one's character it is always judicious to have exchange of thoughts and ideas as that enriches and enlightens us exchange of thoughts assist in broadening our perspective and widening the horizon of our thinking abilities to witness such an enlivening session where the enthusiastic speakers would engage in a battle of words to establish their thoughts and beliefs convincingly i warmly welcome everyone on this online platform today we have the english department of mc kejriwal vidyapeet presenting before you a debate competition duel of ideas between the present students and the alumni and the motion for today's debate competition is in the opinion of the house learning english must be made compulsory for all wishing a very good morning to our respected chairman sir mr kishan kumar kejriwal director sir mr nilkant gupta principal ma'am mrs mallika mukherjee headmaster sir mr vishwajit majumdar who is also one of the judges for today's debate competition honorable chairperson sir professor dr shuman mukherjee and ma'am moyuri mukherjee one of our esteemed judges for today's debate competition also warm greetings to our dear colleagues students of mc kejriwal vidyapeet and madhusthali vidyapeet and all who have joined to witness this one of a kind debate competition it gives us immense pleasure to welcome professor dr shuman mukherjee director general of the bhavanipur education society college kolkata as the chairperson for today's debate competition sir is a zaverian stefanian and an alumnus of delhi school of economics sir has participated in many inter college uh, international conferences and seminars he is a member of indo british indian scholars association sir has been invited as an international observer at bill clinton white house conference in small businesses washington in 1995 and is the recipient of mother teresa international award 2014 in education we consider ourselves privileged to have you amongst us sir our respected judges for today's competition are ma'am moyuri mukherjee the debate coach at the heritage school kolkata who conducts regular public speaking workshops in association with the calcutta debating circle ma'am was a delegate at the difficult dialogues london school of economics south asia summit in 2016 and was a part of the calcutta debating circle uk india debate too held in london in 2017 our second judge for today's competition is mr vishwajit majumdar the headmaster of our school mc kejriwal vidyapeet sir is an english teacher and was the head of the english department sir has presented papers at iit delhi and published articles in various national magazines sir has conducted workshops on communication and public speaking skills sir has initiated the mckv debating circle which aims to train students to become better speakers and acquire the skills of public speaking we consider ourselves fortunate to have you all amidst us now to introduce you to the speakers of today's competition the speakers who would put forth their opinion for the motion are harsh modi of class 8b siddharth dugar of class 11c prayog bothra of isc batch 2021 prayog is pursuing his graduation in commerce from st xavier's college kolkata and is preparing for ca exams prayog is a member of the mckv alumni The next speaker who would speak for the motion is Krishna Murari Tiwari of ISC batch 2021 he is also a member of the MCKV alumni and is going to pursue his graduation in commerce at Delhi University 
the speak the participants speaking against the motion are sarthak hazra of 9c oishik de of class 11a akash goel of isc batch 2012 akash was a topper in the commerce stream akash is a member of nckv alumni he has completed is his graduation in commerce from st xavier's college kolkata akash has the experience of being a member of St Xavier's College Debating Society and has won laurels in interdepartmental and intercollege debating events. Akash has completed chartered accountancy with distinction from ICAI. He has been an associate with Deloitte Calcutta and has been a public policy fellow at PRS Legislative Research based in Delhi. At present he offers freelance consultancy in capital markets and is also involved in financial technology related consultancy akash is also preparing for civil service examinations our next speaker who would be putting forth his opinion against the motion is saurav bhattacharji of isc batch 2021 he has qualified the neat exam 2021 and the counseling is yet to happen this is all with our speakers for today's competition all the best to each one of you let us listen to each of the contenders and witness the war of wars and see and observe whose deliberation outweighs the other with this i request our respected chairperson sir professor dr shuman mukherjee to take over the proceedings of the debate sir if you would please oblige yeah uh, good morning to all participants and organizers and my personal gratitude to the college uh, the school for inviting me to share this event uh, let's without much ado let me once again introduce the topic in the opinion of the house learning english must be made compulsory for all um, the rules i'm sure you know but just for the sake of uh, the audience each speaker will be given 4 minutes to speak a bell will be rung at the end of the three of 3 minutes to indicate that only one is left one minute is left for the speaker to finish expressions the judges will not award any marks beyond your time frame another bell will be rung at the end of your there will be a after each speaker has spoken and uh, after that his opinion either for or against the motion and the question will be from the judges so after every speaker finishes his deliberation there will be a judges question round where the judges will ask short and precise questions uh, to the participants for competing uh, for the competing teams and uh, and i think i'd request one of the judges maybe mayuri to announce what is the scoring sheet i know they are they are uh, they are marking you for presentation and matter but there will be marks also for answers to the questions the judges ask and uh, also for uh, the your rebuttal uh, which would be uh, which would be marked based on the judges question so moyuri would you please like to come in and say what's your scoring sheet hello everyone so we have a very diverse and well thought out scoring pattern it's very extensive so it does cover Uh, a lot of criteria <clears throat> the first criteria is logic where you will be scored out of 10 then there is correct use of language which has been allotted 5 marks there's use of humor 5 marks presentation for 10 marks rebuttal for 5 marks and the question answer session also 5 marks so the total is 40 thank you so much thank you so without much ado let me set the ball in motion i would like to talk on the subject because that will bring in a bit of bias against any of the uh, speakers so let me proceed by asking the first speaker and i'd ask the mc to please help me on that regard uh, yes. just in case i i get the speaking pattern wrong so they have their preference of coming first second etc 
So I leave it to you, in fact, uh, to announce the names. But the names for the motion is Harsh Modi. Is that the first speaker? No, sir. The first speaker is Prayog Botra. So please uh, take it on from now. Yes. After yes, they've sir. spoken, you invite the first, yes. second, and third. And we'll right, go in tandem sir. for the motion right, and the Thank yes. you. Yes. Oh, so am I audible? Yes, yes Prayog. So shall I begin? Yes, please. Okay. So 1.32 million speakers. That is the number of English speakers in the world currently and undoubtedly the highest for any language in the world. Good morning to our respected chairperson, sir, honorable judges, respected teachers, and all my fellow competitors present here. I'm Prayog Bothra, and I'll be speaking for the topic that learning English should be made compulsory. Our common language is English, and our common task is to ensure that our non-English speaking population learn this common language. A quote by William J. Bennett and a stat to prove this is that English is the official language of 67 countries, apart from the countries where it is the main language. As the primary language of communication across the globe, proficiency in English is a highly sought after skill in the international workplace. Job applicants with a fluency in English on their CV are statistically proven to have increased hiring potential. Knowledge of English is also equips one with the tools to travel and communicate more effectively in so many parts of the world that in turn allows you to explore and travel more confidently. All the high standard countries in the world are English speaking countries. And in order to start a life in any such country, you must achieve a certain level of English proficiency. Okay, I'll tell you about a show, uh, Tarak Mehta Ka Ulta Chashma, one of the oldest actively running TV shows in India and uh, probably also the most viewed one. There's a character in this show, Jetalal, the lead character of the show. But, you know, he does not know English. By no, I meant K-N-O-W, no? Yeah, I know you guys know it, that uh, I meant that, but for Jetalal, only one no exits, that is N-O. That is bad luck uh, that whenever his incapability to speak English comes forward, it's always in front of his crush. So this was just an example to warn you people who think that uh, learning English should not be made compulsory, that one does not understand English and want to impress someone. Not a big deal if you are uh, embarrassed in front of him or her. Uh, English is a funny language. Like Indeed, it is funny. You see, people who don't want that learning English should be made compulsory are themselves keeping their points over here in English. You know, this is what power can do. Power of being the most spoken language. But still, there are people who don't want their fellow men to get a better living. Right, competitors? Someone has rightly said, man is his biggest enemy. But anyways, moving forward, learning English should be made compulsory because it provides a lot of opportunities for the ones who can use it. This language gives choices for future development, makes communicating between people easier, and helps people to use the technological advantages of the modern world. Certain people believe that uh, learning English would cause in a decline of their own language, but it can be learned as a second language. Moreover, uh, science proves that uh, learning a second language is proven to be one of the best ways to keep your mind challenged and Studies have shown uh, that the brain undergoes electrical activity and even structural and size changes while learning another language. So I would like to conclude by saying that learning English is an important step forward to unlock all the possibilities in the global market, be the field of education, employment, tourism, and the list goes on and on. Thank you. Right. Uh, can we have the next speaker on? Please. Yes, the second speaker for today's debate competition is Sarthak Hazra. May I start? Of class 9C. Um, can I start? Please. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Mitro, today we are going to talk about this thing. Is the knowledge of the language necessary or not? Anybody not able to understand what I just said is free to raise their hand. We live in a country 
where 400 million people have Hindi as their mother tongue. And it's just 140 of us here. So each one of you have perfectly understood me even without the use of English. A very good morning, honorable chairperson, sir, respected director, sir, principal, ma'am, headmaster, sir, judges, teachers, my fellow debaters, and everyone else present on this digital platform. It is rightly said that language is the roadmap of a culture. It tells where its people come from and where are they going. Speaking from the point of view of an Indian, I'm very proud of being one. In India itself, there are places that refuse to speak English because they fear a culture loss, which is an actual reality in today's world of multiculturalism. And as much as we hate this attitude, we cannot deny the fact that this movement has inherent value. And it's not that the people do not know English. They do not want English to be their primary identity. Consider countries like Sweden, Brazil, Russia, Germany, which have economies that are better than the most. Their schools also teach English, but they employ their own mother tongue as the medium of instruction. Moreover, English being the language of the colonizer has this related concept of respect and dominance. A person being able to speak this language fluently is immediately viewed with reverence. This often makes a person feel inferior, even though he may be highly knowledgeable and qualified. This should not be. Respect has to be earned and it cannot be decided by any language. Instead of becoming a barrier, the language should become an enabler for education to reach everybody in a manner that everybody can comprehend. We cannot serve people better unless we think globally, act locally. In the global context, not knowing English has been considered an obstacle in our ways to achieve our goals. Yet, we have few examples of people who are thriving even without knowing an iota of the language. The Prime Minister of our country, Sri Narendra Modi, comes from a humble background and he has finished his basic education in Hindi and Gujarati. He is not shy of speaking in Hindi, but the case is not the same for all. Indian languages are slowly dying out. In a recently held book fair in New Delhi, there were five halls occupied by international publishers, whereas there was only one hall for Indian languages. Sanskrit, one of the most ancient languages with a 3,500 year old history is almost dead. In conclusion, I would like to say that knowledge should not be restricted by any language. The English language should become an addition and not the foundation of the education system. Thank you. Well, uh, all speakers are reminded that you have a allotted time of four minutes. So if you're finishing half a minute before, you're losing out on speaking time. So keep a tag on your timer before you finish off. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't get the judge's question for either the first speaker or the second. Maybe they'd like to ask them at the end of the debate, each of them. Or would you like to ask that now? Uh, uh, yes, sir, whatever uh, is uh, you know possible, whatever is comfortable, I have no okay, problem. Let, let, let me have a second round then. Let me finish right. every right. speech. You right. make a question for each one. And right. we'll give them a chance to uh, answer your questions. Absolutely. So let's proceed uh, with the next speaker for, for the motion, please. Uh, our next speaker is, and sir, uh, just uh, one thing I would like to ask, like they would, there would be rebuttal round as well, when the speakers would be refuting. The no, rebuttal is rebutting based on the other speech that apparently the speakers have not understood. Rebuttal is if somebody is spoken, you sort of uh, rebut that. And that came from Shatta Khazra when he pointed out 1.2 million people and he said India's population is larger than that. That's oh, a rebuttal. Okay, okay. okay so okay. You, you spin off on somebody else's argument. That's a rebuttal. But okay. when the judges ask a question, that is okay. to find out whether that was a prepared note or whether the candidate actually was speaking from his heart and mind. 
So that's why the judge's question to seek clarification on the points made by the speaker. So uh, that's a separate element. But the two together would compose refutational abilities. So we will proceed with the next one. Next speaker, All right, please. sir. Next speaker is Harsh Modi of Class 8B. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. You, you are audible. Please. Sorry Proceed. to interrupt, but before he starts, can the speaker be on the main screen instead of the timer? I think that's far better because you'll get the eyes. You know where the eyes are. The timer can be kept as a smaller corner piece if you want. Or you can evade it. We, we are keeping a track on, on the yeah. time. We'll look for the buzzer. It's fine if we don't have the time, but it would, ni it would be nice to have the speaker on. on yes, on I'd like, prefer that. Yes. Okay. Good morning to Honorable Chairman, sir, Director, sir, Principal, ma'am, Headmaster, sir, Chief Guest, sir, Judges, Teachers, my fellow debaters, and everyone else present at the digital platform. Today, I, Harsh Modi of Class 8B, would like to speak for the motion. Yes, the English language should be mandatory across all levels, beginning with school, because simply it is very important. 94 countries have only one language in which they can all communicate. So most businesses and government services are conducted in English. It would be a disservice to students to not require them to learn the language that will allow them to find jobs. In today's era, we should know how to speak fluently in English as the digitalization and connectivity is increasing day by day. It will not only help us in our interviews for jobs, but also in our daily life. Because there is a great utility of English in the modern world. So, the use of English should be continued along with Hindi and other regional languages as a skill. No doubt, mother tongue is important, but we have to understand that in order to face the outside world, we have to come out of our comfort zone. No one is telling us to leave our mother tongue. Give it that much preference. Besides, we have to do something more than that. The Andhra Pradesh government has also decided to make English the medium of learning at all degree colleges in the state beginning this academic year. The government feels the introduction of English at the undergraduate level would enhance the career prospects of the graduate. English is widely spoken and taught in over 118 countries and is commonly used as a trade or diplomatic language. It is the language of science, aviation, computers, diplomacy, and tourism. Last but not the least, it is the language of international communication, the media, and the internet. All of these make English a skill and not simply a language. If all states like Andhra Pradesh make English compulsory, then we will be advancing towards the better future and the day would not be far when our country would be recognized as one of the developed countries of the world. Of course, a person is not going to be killed if he is not studying English, but it is always a good habit to learn something that the whole world wants to hear. Even if 94 countries debate on a topic altogether, their common language of talking is English. Similarly, everyone present here in this competition is going to talk in English, which proves that though we are here debating on this topic, everyone deep within their heart has the thought that English should be made compulsory. In conclusion, the English language provides a lot of benefits for the one who can use it. It helps people to use the technological advancements of the modern world. So the emphasis should be on developing English as a skill. Thank you. Well, can we have the next speaker? But before that, let me warn the speakers, please get down to business of speaking straight away and not to digress into introducing yourself once again and, you know, um, and 
exchanging greetings on judges and thanking the organizers and the principal and the headmaster you're wasting very precious time because you're being marked for only five minutes or four minutes so next speaker please Uh, ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute yourself. Ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. Next speaker who would be speaking against the motion is Saurav Bhattacharji of ISC Batch 2021. Sir, am I audible? Yes, Saurav. What is actually English? English is a language. A language is a means to converse with one another. Now, whether we do it in Hindi, Malayalam, English, or just by beating up our own chests, that entirely up to an individual. Let's get the facts straight first. Is English important? Of course it is, as my fellow debaters have already told, that English is, after all, the international language. But is it, quote-unquote, compulsory to be learned by all? Absolutely not. Because when we see a thing as trivial as a language to be compulsory, the opinion of the house loses its meaning. Because then how are we any different than those religious fanatics who have been trying to wage their holy war based on their one true religion? You have been saying, how can we live in today's world without knowing English? But it is in today's smartphone era that we can actually live without English because we have things like Google translators, AI assistants, which can convert one language to another language easily. Does it even matter that countries like Japan and South Korea cannot speak English that well? They're still ruling us technologically. Does it even matter that less than 1% of the people of mainland China can actually speak fluent English? Of course not, but they're still a superpower. You know what, in our zeal of banning everything Chinese, we are actually adopting everything Western without even thinking about our own Indian cultures and languages. Would it have mattered to the stature of a person like Miss Tulsi Goda, the Padmasri recipient, if she could speak English as good as, say, Mr. Shashi Tharoor? Would it have mattered if Charlie Chaplin was French or German or Bengali, it would still be funny. As a certified bathroom singer, I can say that I sing Despacito with the same enthusiasm that I sing See You Again. If you pick up a child from the slums of Dharavi, would you rather teach him why the tsunami has a silent T or rather teach him just basic life skills first? I would like to end with the thought that English is not a necessity. It is a luxury for people like us who have the ability to sit in this digital environment without thinking about whether we will get food the next day or not, or whether we have a roof above our head or not. Thank you. Right. Uh, I think you have enough uh, matter to refute or accept as far as the members of the, uh, I mean, the proposition are concerned. So I look forward to that because he's raised some very, very intelligent and searching points. So let's look at the next speaker from, for the proposition. Our next speaker who would be speaking for the motion is Krishna Murari Tiwari of ISC Batch 2021. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, 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 Krishna. So, uh, shall I start? Yes, please. So, a very good morning to one and all present here. The motion for today's debate is, in the opinion of the House, learning English must be made compulsory for all. I'm going to speak for the motion. What is this education? Is it about a system wherein a child gets through with degrees and certificates without relevant or most of the times outdated skills? Or is it more than that? The panel would certainly agree that it is much more than marks and all the facade associated with it. It is a process which is set on the principles of enrichment and growth of a child, wherein she or he is competent and aware enough to face the challenges and cope up with the changing times. 
In this plan, I'm going to talk about a language, which is not just a language. There are roughly 6,500 languages in the world. And if there wasn't a common connecting language, we would all be oblivious of some of the best ideas worldwide. English today is the major language of trade, tech, media, and science. The best example to quote here is India. Today, many Indian startups are being funded by foreign investments, but this couldn't have been possible if there wasn't an effective medium for the exchange of ideas between these two. English provides us with such a medium. Global organizations and many countries have made English as their mode of communication. So it's not just a fashion statement to know English, but a requirement. English is and has been a crucial tool for globalization. Language by definition means a system of communication or a tool which eases the process. Numerous laws would not have reached the other countries and we would have kept on wasting more apples to make the same discovery over and over again. David Crystals, a British linguist, was once asked about the future of English as a global language, to which he said that it would surely be a problem thousand years later. Who knows? But today, in the present, it is something which we have and must reckon with and excel at all costs. English is something which helps us to increase our knowledge because information which has global reach is always published in English. After making the set points, I would now like to ask a question. Why is this debate in English? Is it because it is easier to Google the points? Maybe, but the greater reason is that it is a catalyst for careers. Career opportunities increase tremendously as soon as a prospective candidate is fluent in English. I believe English is something which can bring in social equality. It helps us to look beyond the boundaries of our nation and our culture. It makes us something close to complete. Talking about the stats, in India, parents are ready to cover leaps and bounds to provide the best of the education to their child, which is clearly reflected from an article which states that 96.17% of the parents want their children to study in English medium education system compared to vernacular medium schools, hoping for a brighter future for their child. So these stats clearly show an increase in the enrollment of children in English medium schools. To sum up, I would say that English, ladies and gentlemen, is not just a language of communication in today's age of globalization. It is a way of life, a tool which can bring us a world full of opportunities. Making English compulsory would also break the shackles of classism and status division, which often occurs because of language barriers. I would like to conclude by saying that if we want good students, we must teach them the right things. But if we want great students, we must give them a medium to express what they've learned. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next speaker for the motion, please. Our next speaker is Oishik Day of class 11A. And he is going to speak against the motion. So, ma'am, can I start? Yes, please. Yes. In January 2019, Swaminathan Ankle Sarya Iyer cited in a quorum in the Times of India research findings from those people who study cognition to argue against the teaching of English in class one. The easiest language, he said, to learn for all human infants is the language that they hear spoken at home. That is undoubtedly their mother tongue. He said that when children do not hear even a smattering of English at home and they are taught English in the very first year of schooling, then their entire learning process is impaired. If they learn to read their mother tongue first and then learn English, then they can learn both the languages better. This is me, Oishik Day, speaking against the motion of the house today. This was just about teaching the language English. Now it can be imagined that teaching math or science or history through English would be even more disastrous. Kids would end up learning by rote, not understanding even a single thing. They'll pass their exams all right, oh yes, but they'll end up unemployable graduate, their native capacity to learn being damaged forever, and their creative faculties being crippled. This is a tremendous loss, both at the individual and the societal level. We Indians are firmly convinced that the only way to learn English properly is to learn everything else through English. This, however, is contrary to logic and empirical evidence, both in India and around the world. Children in every country today, like my fellow debaters said, in 94 countries today, they learn English. They learn it as a foreign language. They learn it well. They know that they are not native English speakers, neither do they aspire to be so. However, 
Many Indian languages today are slowly dying. The best and the brightest of the lot will learn only English. The poetry they'll write will be in English. The thesis papers they'll provide, uh, propound will be in English. Their creativity will never nourish the roots of their mother culture. Great Indian languages like Sanskrit, Tamil, whose proto sounds have resonated with sense and sensibility of human beings for thousands of years will languish and die. Sounds implausible. You'll find that President Ramnath Kovind on International Language Day sent a letter to all the chief ministers in India, imploring them to preserve the near extinct languages in their respective states, citing that more than 25% of all Indic languages are dead. The print order for a book of poetry in Hindi, which is spoken by 600 million people across the globe, is only 500. But for Hindi films, Hindi poetry would have been long dead by now. In fact, India is so caught up in the pre-freedom era that we find Tisky allowing only Bernard Shaw and Shakespeare in place into the fold. Premium advertising in the print media goes only to the English publications. When people have money to spend, they easily defect from their mother tongue to English. Everybody wants to earn more money. They'll want to imitate the habits of the elite who are only stab in their ethnic clothes and speak only in English. The current fetish with English medium schools destroys learning and creativity. It produces unemployable graduates and sets Indian languages on an inexorable course of destruction. What is the alternative, you ask? Teach kids in their own mother tongue. Produce world-class textbooks. By all means, translate them from English for all levels and then revamp the teaching of English as a second language. As my fellow debater said, do not make English your primary identity. Refrain from raising your hackers and listening. You are not a cat. Forcing a language upon somebody is like making them adopt new parents, which is just not possible. Thank you. Thank you. Before I call on the last speaker for the motion, uh, let me request the organizers not to allow people to enter whenever they want to, because, you know, that name comes over the picture and that sort of breaks the continuity of my ability to listen to them. So please uh, stop entry when a person has not been interested to hear any of the speakers to come in at such a moment. Uh, this should have been done at the very outset. Before you started the debate, you should have brought in your audience and then started the debate. But no entry should have been allowed after the debate starts. So please stop this process. And let me ask you to invite the last speaker uh, proposing the motion. Our next speaker is Siddharth Dugar of Class 11C. And he is going to speak for the motion. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, Siddha. Okay. The English language has never had an official standard of itself. It has evolved through centuries and adopted many thousands of words through overseas exploration, international trade, and building of an empire. It has progressed from very humble beginnings as a dialect of Germanic settlers in 5th century to a global language in today, 21st century. English is now no more a language. It is means to our ends. Many countries, including Australia, Singapore, South Africa, Canada, the list is endless, have made English as their official language. Governments increasingly recognize the importance of English for the economies and societies. Why are they doing so? Because individuals see English as a tool that can help them to fulfill their personal aspirations. Learning English provides students with a wide range of information. For instance, in fact, most of the web pages on the internet are in English. The internet has a huge amount of information and some of them can only be accessed in English. My fellow, deb fellow debaters sort of mentioned about translators. But when we translate a thing from English to our native language, that authenticity, that originality is not reflected. And sometimes translation comes out to be very funny, out of the context. Secondly, English language is a means of communication now, global communication. We can use English to interact with people all over the world, as well as making friends with different nationalities. It helps in socializing people, socializing with people in a much better way. Also, English language provides people with much better job opportunities. There are many jobs available for graduate students who can use English well than those who cannot. 
Furthermore, anyone who knows English can be promoted to a higher seat or salary in their working. My fellow debater Sathak mentioned that English contextualizes culture. But in a world of multiculturalism, it is imperative to have a unifying factor. And English language promotes that universal fraternity. Also, my fellow debater Aoyish just mentioned that English should not be taught at very root level. But unless we inculcate the language in early stages, we will not be able to learn it as our linguistic ability does not operate as our age progresses. Yeah, our ability to pick up a language is limited to a certain age. And it helps us throughout. Like there are many businessmen who export and import different goods from one country to another. Now they need a common platform to converse with each other and understand their needs. And English provides with that platform to them. To sum up, I would, also, I would like to state that though we should not forget our native language, but the need of the hour is that we will have to put in a greater effort in learning English because it provides with much greater opportunities and now it is a soft skill, a mere necessity that helps us to break through the barriers and expose us to the outer world and face the challenges in the world. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let me ask uh, the last speaker of this morning to come on and uh, that will be against the motion. Yes. Uh, our next speaker and the last speaker who would be speaking against the motion is Akash Goel of ISC Batch 2012. Yes, Akash. I would appreciate a warning bell at the end of three minutes. Uh, hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay. For Wittgenstein, language was a mode of painting pictures. And as per the Safir Wharf hypothesis, language contributes to a unique worldview. So it is essential to understand that when we say that we are making the learning of a language compulsory, be it any language in this context, English, we're imposing a particular worldview on everybody. And that hinders just not creativity and innovation, but something deeply <laughs> instinctual in everybody's mind. It essentially contributes to banality more than it does to innovation and inventions. It is important to understand the existential absurdity when we talk about mandating a language or like English and in the context of India, like being in an eddy of a particular framework while navigating an ocean of vernacular, like we all do and many of the speakers have pointed out to the middle class navigating this English vernacular socioeconomic divide in order to climb the social ladder. Unfortunately, our education system is structured as such. And it is also critical to understand that every language is not just a means of industrial success or just a means of acquiring material wealth as many of the speakers speaking for have suggested. But when it comes to knowledge acquisition, we are yet to even scratch the surface like we are yet to explore the oceans as much as we have the space. For instance, the Greeks have discovered around 3,500 manuscripts and the Romans have discovered another 500,000. But do you even know how many manuscripts exist in India and are being digitized by the National Manuscript Mission? It's more than 5 million. That creation of knowledge which is yet to be understood, explored, is something that can only be done when one acquires felicity in one's native tongue and thereby not just the cultural confidence, but the moral authority to also probe those sources. Keynes had said that it is more difficult to shed old baggage than to build something new. In that context, it speaks to our colonial hangover to a great extent when we say that English ought to be made mandatory because it essentially discounts and undermines the native tongues that people have to, uh, uh, have to assimilate to better in order to contribute much more to their society. After all, we cannot expect the romance of Barish to be conveyed in a sterile reign in our context, or for that matter, the word uh, friendship having as much resonance as Bundhutto or, or Dostana in, uh, for us. So it is important 
that language is looked at from various perspectives as a method of knowledge creation, as a site of cultural struggle, one of social justice, wherein we take into account the tribals and those on the margins of society, and at the end as a common bond, wherein we forge together one linkage. After all, just to take another context, the UK, US, Australia, and New Zealand's uh, Five Eyes Alliance is somewhere or the other predicated on their common language base. Similarly, for us Indians, it might be English, to which unites us to a great extent. But the other languages which are there need to contribute to the diversity of not just our thinking, but an exploration, but also uh, our, our self-development. Finally, how a language dies. It dies just by this, reducing its importance, cutting off the uh, ascent that one has to contribute to it and develop. Thank you. Right. Uh, we will now ask the judges to ask their questions so that we give <laughs> all the speakers a chance to speak once again, explaining their point. Uh, so we will start with, uh, would, you, would the uh, MC please invite the first speaker and the judge's question for that? Any of the judges can ask a question on that. Yes, the first speaker is Prayog Botra. Judges, would you like to ask him questions? Your question, please, judges, for Prayog. Yes, uh, may I ask the questions? Yes, yes sir. Please. Hello, Prayog. Uh, can you hear me, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Prayog, you spoke for the uh, propositions, and uh, you are preferring that English language must be made compulsory. Yes. But my question is, in a country like India, is it feasible? Can it be possible? Or do you really follow it? That English language is uh, always you know, mandatory in a country like ours. Obviously, sir. Uh, sir, if we, even if we take our country, then English English is the official language of the country, and as well as many many states. Uh, to name a few, like uh, states like uh, Tamil Nadu, Sikkim. These are certain states as well who have made who have made the official English as the official language of the state. And so, keeping in mind the literacy rate which that has been increasing the past years, uh, like the uh, like uh, states like Sikkim and uh, Tamil Nadu have also at a point they they reached hundred percent uh, literacy rate as well. So, so giving the fact when uh, India is stressing so much on education and uh, even our PM himself to, uh, as one of the speakers mentioned, I don't remember who mentioned, yeah, Sathak, that, uh, that Narendra Modi also has his education background in Gujarati uh, and Hindi. But now at present, when he is traveling around the world, he has to converse his English. He's, he cannot go to, uh, go to, you know, US, pre the president of US and just go and talk in Gujarati and uh, expect him to understand. That's not, the, uh, that's not what's happening. So in a country like India as well, where, where the government even makes English as an official language, so why not the people can uh, learn it? That's all right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. The next, uh, the uh, speaker. The next speaker. Against the yes. Sarthak Hazra of class 9C, who spoke against the motion. Judges, please, your question for Sarthak. Guy or Mayuri ma'am, you can go ahead. Go ahead, sir. I will also ask uh, after yours. I don't mind. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay. Sarthak, uh, good morning. And I just wanted to ask, yeah, I just wanted to know, you talked about uh, the fact that English language should not be mandatory. But uh, can you please uh, tell me why is there a craze to go for English medium schools in our country? Sir, uh, the craze for uh, to go to English medium school in our country because the the condition or the quality of education that is provided in the um, kind of the government school, sir, that is uh, uh, below par. So, sir, uh, the parents want to send their children to English medium school to get the quality education. Yes, sir, English as mentioned by the debaters, it is important, but it should be equally, uh, but the our own language should be equally important as English. So when the condition of the government schools in our uh, 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 country is so bad, that is why parents send their children to uh, English medium schools. For okay, the motion, second speaker, please. And let uh, Judge Mayuri ask that question to Harsh Modi. Harsh Modi of Class 8B. 
Hello, Harsh. Uh, first of all, you are the youngest here, mm-hmm. so I must commend you. Harsh, I have a question for you. I want to say that um, you spoke of how English learning English should be made compulsory. I want to ask you, why can this not be a choice? Why can't it be that those who want to learn English will, and those who don't want to, they don't. They will not learn it. Why are you not for a give? Why are you not for giving the people a choice when it comes to the languages they wish to learn? Okay. If we take this question, then it will be applicable only within the country. Beyond the country, mm-hmm. if we will connect to the outside world, then we have to use the language that is easily understood by all, which is of course English. Okay, but uh, that didn't quite answer the question. The judge asked, "Why should it not be a choice?" To let's have the next speaker on. The second speaker. Sorry, for the judge. Yeah. Judges, your question, please, for oh, Saurav. Judge Mayuri, please. Hello, Saurav. Uh, it was a very good speech, but I was quite struck by a particular term that you used to talk about languages. I think you said something like, "Why should something as trivial as language be made compulsory?" So I would like to ask you why you consider language to be a trivial entity in the world of today. Well, uh, a trivial entity for us, it might not be trivial because we are sitting in this digital background. We have received education, but uh, ma'am, can you think about those who are sitting in slums? For them, is language the most important matter in their life? Something which must be made compulsory. For them, it is not. For them, it is the basic amenities like food, clothing, and a house, which are basic amenities. which should be in the bracket of compulsory it is not trivial in the sense that it shouldn't be compulsory what should be compulsory are food clothing a proper housing for all the people in india in a country like india where there are so many poor people language is truly trivial i think uh, the difference is between necessary and sufficient yes sir. so i you're hitting on that point let me have the next next speaker on please i mean and uh, the question from the judge's side third next next is krishna murari tiwari yes krishna please unmute yourself yes judges your question for him would sir like to ask yes sure uh krishna uh in your speech you talked about great students so just uh, wanted to know is it so that only the great students uh, are there from english i mean those who are great students they are from english medium background or they only know english well the other people other students those who are from native language are they not great students what do you say to that just like i think the content i cannot hear you hello how am i one no there is a there is a problem with your audio please hello. come again yeah now it's all right am i audible now yes very clearly yes sir, so uh, like uh, sir great students which i talked about uh, i talked about, about that in the context of global scenario like when we see globally when we talk globally like we can't believe that a particular vernacular language student can go to uh, to any any global level or any global position and uh, speak there or see the levels if a person knows english that he can see through those positions and see through those situations whenever we he or she is in any other situation like that okay okay uh, next speaker please next is oishik de of class 11a oishik please unmute yourself oishik yes ma'am am yes. i audible yes oishik 
judges your question please for Ishik. Hello, Ishik. Uh, it it was a good speech, but uh, I feel like I must ask you. Do you think it's easier to argue that English should not be compulsory when you are already a good English speaker yourself? What about the perspective of those who haven't had the opportunity to learn the language and actually see it as a crutch? Yes, ma'am. Actually, I was thinking on this point too, and I'd like to speak this in terms of colonial India. When uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, he struck out, he lashed out against people, against Raja Ram Mohan Roy's father, asked Raja Ram Mohan Roy how he could change Hinduism being a Hindu himself. So when I am a good English speaker, I need to project my thoughts and English gives me that platform. However, the context of the debate today is whether or not English should be compulsory. So English being compulsory, as uh, a fellow debater already pointed out, that is no different, imposing English is no different than religious fanatics who chose to impose their religion upon other people. So people should have a choice. You don't want to learn English? That's okay. That's all right. Because even if we consider it in international terms, what better body to consider than the UN? Even UN has six official languages. English... Hebrew, Arabic, French, Russian, and Chinese. So you have, you do not see people getting mad about not learning French. So you do not see a frenzy for Chinese. You see only a frenzy for English. That should not be the case. That is where I was trying, that was what I was trying to elaborate. Right. Uh, we will take on the next speaker and the judge's question for that. And that is, uh, I think, Siddharth Dugar. Yes, Siddharth yes. Dugar of 11C. Judges, your question. Uh, Moiri, ma'am, you can ask the questions. So, for Siddharth, also, I have the same question that I asked before, but I'm looking for a little more meaty answer. Siddharth, why should English be made, a, learning English be made a compulsion? Why can't it be left to a choice? Those who wish to learn it will. Those who do not wish to learn it won't. Ma'am, actually, keeping it a choice, that means when we keep it as a choice, many people will know not to learn English. But when we make it compulsory, it is creating great opportunities for those who have learned it. Now, we can see differences in job opportunities. Now, if we, now whether or not we accept or not, deep down the earth, we know. That one who's deep down, the, deep down our heart, we know that one who speaks English will get favor in job. Now, if we keep a choice on whether one wants to learn English or does not want, then he would face difficulties in that, that platform. Even in the global context, now a person who might be having great knowledge, but he can express only in his vernacular language or language in which he is suitable in. But if he doesn't know English, he wouldn't be able to communicate his information. We wouldn't be able to means give his means give his knowledge or rather spread his knowledge among the multitudes without ha having a basic knowledge of English because if he speaks in vernacular that will be, have limited scope but when he speaks in English it will get a wider scope. People would be able to comprehend it more easily so means I think so there are many other points that would means illustrate on this that it should be made a compulsion and I have mentioned a few now. The last speaker please uh... And uh, Akash Goel, yes, yeah. Akash Goel. Uh, may I ask the questions? Yes, please. yeah, thank you. Good morning, Akash, sir. Uh, good morning, Akash. Happy to see you back after so many years. Same here, same here. <laughs> uh, wonderful speech, but just wanted to clarify don't, don't you think that we have to be with the time and keeping? The situations of babble of language in a country like ours. What do you say to that? Yeah, in a country like ours, uh, English is uh, not more, just a language. It's it's a liturgy to project power. It's it's less of a language, more of uh, something to do with your position, your status, and its education remains a struggle to acquire for millions. 
so my contention is not in any way discounting the importance of english one should certainly study english as one should study french chinese perhaps a little more so in the context uh, of our nation and and the working language that english is but uh, again our constitution also doesn't provide for a national language because you don't want to uh, you have different flags for different nations right you don't or you have a different constitution or a different uh, book for every religion because there's a different uniqueness attached to these aspects which touches at the core of people and that should not be undermined and when we say mandatory what we are doing in a country like ours is essentially saying that others are not important so they're not very mandatory it's like a qualifying subject kind of a thing you don't give as much importance to that in particular subject but what we miss out on in in doing so is is contribute to english itself so it's a loss for english as well because english is has is a derivative language essentially one that is developed with its scandinavian roots with uh, taking from other languages it it took the word loot unfortunately and and something like juggernaut from the jagannath puri yatra uh, into its lexicon and it keeps taking words from other languages and that lies at the heart of why english has acquired such a global footprint but that in any way does not take away from the importance of other languages because if you don't do that then what you're doing is by making mandatory you're not exploring linguistic merit and not exposing people to a myriad uh, disciplines and uh, and being mindful of myriad cultures uh, and and other beauty which is there in other languages and other uh, important traditions and heritage uh, aspects that's yeah. all but, yeah thank you thank you so we come to the end of a very stimulating debate and i'd like the judges to hand over the score sheets because you have got the answers to the questions and one of the reasons why i asked the judges to ask these searching questions is because it would save me a lot of trouble of saying what was missing in the debate so we discussed through, through the judges question the question of feasibility the question of choice the question of making it a craze uh, whether or not it's a trivial matter and uh, what makes a great student the the multi, multiple languages that we have at the united nations and certainly learning from other subjects uh, and cultures too i think uh, at the end of the debate it was a very very fulfilling exercise it's not a ritual for me to say it was a great debate but i genuinely believe we covered all the base points of this game but i still would believe that there are certain things that could have been touched on which we haven't and that's the whole point of of a uh, chairman because you'd look at points which were not discussed my first issue is when you meditate what is the language that you use when you have communion with god or when you're talking within yourself are you speaking in english are you speaking in your original language or when you speak to your mother or your grandmother who's not had the benefit of being in a english medium school how do you communicate with them so when you are referring to the question of compulsory you are actually looking at all levels of mind and to that we come into the concept of human consciousness and human consciousness is uh, a composite of three thought three things uh, the cognitive that is the thought process which is certainly what you inherited more than what you've learned in books uh emotive values which again comes with your genetic order and your able to, ability to uh, interact em empathy if you like or sympathy if you want how does that come and uh, the final point is evaluation and evaluation does not have a language but it's more mathematical when you do it in quantitative terms or maybe even in qualitative terms so when i look at the entire idea of human consciousness language of the kind that we use to describe ourselves is has only limited vision so human consciousness gets limited a point that was perhaps missing is what is language all about it is a process of understanding it's a process of sharing values it's a process of developing skills it's a process of acquiring attitudes or changing your attitudes and in that way creating preferences 
While I'm on that point, let me also tell you that there are theories which say a country remains underdeveloped because you sell it a language which is alien to yourself. Because if you have a low levels of living, you have low self-esteem. And when you have low self-esteem, you have uh, limited freedom. You have borrowed ideas. For instance, our sense of taste, our sense of dressing, our sense of music, it all gets acquired. And you try to give a bypass to your own sense of music, your own culture, your dressing habits, your norms. You know, for instance, let's take greetings. Uh, in the West, we would still shake hands. Thanks to COVID, we have realized that the physical touch is not so good. We do the namaste, which comes from the East. The namaste, or repeated bows, as the Chinese would do, keep a social distancing. But when you do the namaste, and which is actually an ex a shortened form of namahaste, it is the five digits on your fingers coming together, resembling your senses, and the thumb should be touching your heart, which actually signifies, I bow to the soul that you have within you. So namahaste is means I am saying, I bow to the hasti, the atma, the soul that you have. Now, such richness of culture can be acquired only if we retain our culture. Uh, there are different significance of the light. When we burn the light in, in, in uh, Hindu tradition, it is to show that let's lift our mind upwards because the flame of the light always goes up. Whereas the symbolism of lighting in, in a church has, has a different mooring altogether. In the church, when a priest completes 25 years of, uh, say, his priesthood, he's given a burnt candle. Why burnt candle? It's a symbol of saying that I've burnt half my life in trying to pursue the goals of being closer to you. And I offer the balance of the candle to see I burn my life for the balance time for your benefit and your glory. So the significance of lighting a lamp, shaking hands, greeting people, or talking to yourself, that can't be lost. But it does get lost when you superimpose an alien culture through its language on you. Because not only your values change, but it gets shaken and your roots are shaken to the core. And that, to a large extent, as I said, low self-esteem, you think of yourself as a lesser person, unless the Indian music, let's say the Indian classical music, when it comes back to us from the shores of America, we want to hear it. Ravi Shankar was made no sense to us unless he came through the, through the corridors of music and through the uh, touch of the Beatles, through Harrison and others. I mean, a lot of these things come back to us only when the Western powers or powers that be christen it yoga. It comes to us only when the Western world says that that's good for you. It really is not acquired to us. We were almost in the process of losing it. Sanskrit is a language which is being thoroughly researched on in Germany. Now, when that happens, I said, it gives you limited freedom. Your freedom of choice, your freedom of dressing, your freedom of belief and beauty, everything gets changed. And you feel that if you're behaving in a style which is more westernized, you show an advancement in your level of thinking. So limited freedom leads to underdevelopment because you sell out your culture, you sell out your demand, and that's supplied with by some other technology. So it is actually a vicious circle. And one must be careful that you take the language for its worth and not for what it stands for. Because you might have in your country a more ancient culture. For instance, the Chinese. Uh, till about 1990s, they were not proficient in English. And they were looking at Wuhan University, uh, University borrowed from Newcastle. And there were several universities from England setting up shop in China to teach them English. And a lot of Indians were going there to teach them English. So we had a first step up 
in the global arena because we had English. We were able to communicate. But that does not mean China didn't develop and aren't ahead with, of us, even in many terms, including HDI. So these are things that perhaps could have been touched on, understanding values, skills, attitudes, and, and of course, the question of preferences. And therein lies the question of how supply gets sucked into the demand. So if you uh, work your demand, you, you sort of change your preference values, and therefore your development plans may go astray. And that's, of course, neoclassical and uh, leftist thinking, but that's there, very much there. Uh, I think uh, the most pertinent question raised was by Mayuri when she asked, why not a choice? Why is it compulsory? And there was another question asked by the judge, is it feasible when you're not able to feed your population, asking them to learn an alien language and getting themselves proficient? That's a tall order. 70 years after independence, it's a shame that a country has still got one out of five people below the poverty line. So is English the priority? Or as someone said, one of the speakers said, is it food, clothing, shelter, and the feeling of being one with humankind? However, we've had a very stimulating discussion, and I'd like the judges to come in and give their points of view before we wind up. And of course, they will hand over the score sheet and I'd be privy to that perhaps when the announcers announce it. Judges, please come on board and let me have um, your views. Thank you, sir. Uh, whatever you have summed up, sir, is absolutely uh, you know, perfect. And I agree with you. And I also believe one of the points that you have just spoken about is how do you communicate when it comes to talk about your feelings? How, which language do we use actually when you talk about your basic instinct or you talk to your uh, parents or as you said rightly, when you talk to somebody who is very close to us or any, any kind of prayer, any kind of feelings that first come to you, what is that language? And I also agree to the fact that in a country like ours, it is all about status, definitely, when we talk about English. But we have to keep in mind that the entire country, perhaps uh, we want to see that dream, but then that bubble of language situation is always there in our country. And as a result of that, we cannot have, perhaps we cannot make it compulsory. I'll just give an example in, a, in, in our uh, state, West Bengal, how many students actually do appear for the board examinations uh, by CISE and how many students actually appear for Madhumik examination. I think that picture will be actually, uh, you know, it'll be clear picture to everybody, the situations. And, uh, and I also agree with the fact that Mayuri Ma'am has rightly pointed out, let there be a choice and let us not make any language compulsory. Let there be a feeling that the language that I want to speak in, I want to study, that should be actually the choice not mandatory. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mayuri can come in. And I'm, I wanted to also add another point. I mean, you were talking about great scholar. So great scholars, how would you place Nochiketa or Shankaracharya? What language did they use to reach where they did? So uh, on that note, let me ask uh, Mayuri to sum up her points of view. Thank you for having me today. And of course, the debate was wonderfully chaired and uh, so so beautifully summed up by our wonderful uh, chairman today. You know, language is so fascinating to me for two reasons. Number one, because of its fluidity. Uh, the way language is changing and the way Gen Z is using language is different from how I use language and it's so different from how my parents' generation used language, especially English. Which is, which is changing so drastically as the generation gap shortens. And while the fluidity of language is interesting, another thing that I also find fascinating about language is how it's being used as a tool to reclaim certain identities in certain spaces. 
So what I would have really liked from this debate, I would have liked some engagement definitely, but especially the students who were debating, the, the, the students of class 11 and 12 who were debating. If you had looked at things happening around us, for example, the new education policy, which actually has a push towards classical and endangered and indigenous languages. If you had looked at the rise of English coming at the cost of something which is now being nationally recognized. If you had also been looking at parallel conversations about the protection that is being afforded to a particular majoritarian language, when we actually come from a country where there are endless languages and dialects. So, you know, language is never just a medium of speaking. It is so much more than that. And the way it binds social processes and culture together actually makes this idea of compulsion so much more relevant in, in today's context. So you cannot look at it, even though, of course, I was, you know, the speakers are young. So I, I did want to, you know, say, think about the fact that there's a choice and think about what it means to have something being mandated. Because if something is mandated, you must ask yourself, who's mandating it? My school principal can mandate that everyone learns English. The prime minister can mandate that everyone learns English. The chief minister can mandate that everyone learns English, but all three of these mean three very different things, especially with the regional and linguistic diversity we have in the country, right? Given our complex socioeconomic scenario, who's making something compulsory is such an interesting question. So I know that uh, in this motion, people did choose to focus on English and um, I, I always love a good, uh, you know, when young people are very nationalist and they say, oh, it's the colonial hangover and we need to get rid of it. I, I like that the sentiment is there. But when you are saying things like that, you look within and you ask yourself if you are coming for a, from a privileged position when you are debating this debate as well. Right. We are so lucky to know English and speak it well. However, there is one point where our privilege ends, which is when we go abroad, which a lot of people were talking about global and international. Remember that you, whether or not you know English, might be reduced to a test score called the IELTS or the test of English as foreign language. Because no matter how well trained you are, the politics involved in being from a country like India will mandate that no matter how good your English is, if your score on paper is good, you get to go, otherwise you don't. So language is political, it's cultural, it's social, it's many things. Um, and I would have really liked everyone to think about these things a little more widely and deeply, if possible. That's all I like to say, but I greatly enjoyed it and um, thank you to everyone. Thank you, the judges and uh, now the organizers, please let's have who was the best speaker and which side won? Yes. Uh, may I announce the results for today? Yes, please do. All right. Uh, it was really a very engaging conversation that we had. And yes, we have the slides here and the results also here. The best speaker for today's debate competition, Duel of Ideas, is Ramadan. Akash Goel of ISC Batch 2012. And the runner-up speaker for today's debate competition is Saurav Bhattacharji of ISC Batch 2021. Congratulations to both of you. Oh, you didn't have a, a prize for the best speaker for the motion. It's both have been speakers against the motion. Then clearly, then the the motion motion is not carried. I mean, based on your judgment, but you might like to mention who was the best speaker for the motion from the proposition. 
yes uh, may we have the scores i would ask uh, moyuri ma'am to kindly announce the name of the best speaker for the motion and also the name of the best speaker against the motion that we know it is akash goyal against the motion yes against the motion is akash goyal overall best speaker of the day who's I, the best speaker for I the believe, motion i believe it's a tie if i'm if i'm not wrong i mean i'm looking at the scores but the sides and yeah is it is it between harsh and siddharth is that the, is there a tie between harsh and siddharth for for the motion looks like it siddharth and harsh okay okay that's right right so that's that then let me on behalf of the judges and myself thank the uh, the organizers and the and the school for inviting us we have had a very enjoyable morning and i i'd like to thank you and also give you the season's greetings and look forward to a very very eventful new year thank you so much thank you sir uh, may i now request our middle school coordinator shongumitra pal ma'am to formally propose the vote of thanks thank you bonali ma'am thank you so much uh, good morning to one and all present here on this virtual platform and thank you for joining in to witness a hardly fought debate indeed a battle of words a duel of ideas uh, i feel indeed honored and privileged to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion I take this opportunity to express my profound gratitude to our chairperson professor dr shuvan mukherjee for not only accepting our invitation but always you know uh, giving us constant guidance at all point of time i don't know how many times i have kind of bothered him with my questions uh, this and that and so gladly you know all the time came forward and gave us suggestions uh, how to take the debate forward thank you sir for all mm -hmm. the guidance and the support that you provided uh, for this for making this debate uh, so very successful thank you thank you sir indeed indebted to you uh, my extend uh, my gratitude also uh, to uh, the two judges ms mayuri mukherjee and uh, our headmaster sir uh mr vishwajit majumdar for their presence and valuable inputs and ms mayuri did uh, talk about uh, uh, you know thinking on a wide scale you know brought about a lot of other pers perspectives that uh, perhaps you know we could have uh, kept in mind the students could have kept in mind and i'm sure the english department teachers have taken uh, note of that and surely uh, you know uh, perhaps uh, in the next uh, debate competition things or will definitely be uh, taken into account and we will definitely guide our students on those lines as well so thank you ma'am for your feedback thank you so much uh, for all the suggestions and the inputs that you shared uh, with our students uh, thank you to all the members of the alumni and the present batch of mckv for taking part uh, in this competition my sincere thanks to our chairman sir mr uh, kishan kumar kejriwal for being our constant support and it was actually his initiative uh, for which all the departments came together and tried to put up you know either it was uh, webinars or there were to be uh, competitions of various kind uh, to celebrate uh, our silver jubilee year so thank you sir a special mention to our director sir for mr nilkan gupta uh, for his encouragement uh, a sincere thanks to our principal ma'am uh, for her vision and her suggestion headmaster sir uh, is part of our english department so uh, thank you sir for your guidance uh, being there with us uh, always uh, last but not the least obviously all the members of the english department uh, ishani ma'am tania ma'am dipika ma'am shorbani chatterjee ma'am uh, rajshree sen gupta for training the students um, 
PPT uh, presentation and the template, uh, Chayan Dugar, one of our uh, bright students, a tech savvy student uh, of uh, class 11, uh, along with Autoshi Ma'am and Ankita Ma'am, uh, technical support team, Ajaysa, Aparna Ghoshal Shah and Devarshana Ma'am uh, for your technical support, because on, on this uh, online platform, this is what matters a lot, the how, uh, you know, a seamless way we can uh, traverse this uh, overall uh, coordination, Bornali Ma'am and Shubhetsha Ma'am. Bornali Ma'am also happens to be the uh, head of the Department of English and Shubhetsha Ma'am being the assistant head of the English department. So thank you to both of them. Uh, Shonali and Shaha Ma'am and Priyanka Ghoshal Ma'am for uh, keeping the scores, uh, helping us reach the conclusion. And uh, our sincere thanks, obviously, to the uh, two activity coordinators, Amrita Sengupta Ma'am and Ramita Ma'am uh, for coordinating the entire show together. Thank you, all the very best. God bless you all. Thank you so much, that's all for me. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.